Here is a remarkable new electric eye movie camera from Kodak. It's the new Kodak Automatic 8, the lowest priced electric eye movie camera that Kodak has ever made. Greetings, everyone. My name is Michael Rosso, and I'm here with Mr. Owen McCafferty. Hey, Owen. Good evening. And What's this, happening? And this is Filmmaking Friday. Today, I just have, have some tips that I scribbled down. Tips. Uh, tips for, for, for better movie making. You know, uh, uh, folks out there, you folks, everyone out there that's shooting movies on film is, is spending their hard-earned cash on the film, the developing, the scanning, and you know whatever we can do to help so you guys get a better reel you know any any tips we can offer so these are a few tips that are my scribblies and uh two let two letters we received the first subject is, is is exposure and i'm seeing a variety of problems here at the fpp the film photography project not only do we sell film stock but we also offer developing and scanning services so I'm seeing firsthand people's film, first of which is using basically the wrong ISO film in daylight. And I see a lot of this because I think that Vision 3 500T Super 8 or 16 millimeter are so popular that I think people gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing is uh, a lot, for example, the film reel I saw this week was like 200 feet of film of 500T shot in broad daylight oh no you know we see you see this with uh, still film too i see a lot on social media of people watching a youtube video and going out and buying like a six pack of portrait 800 <laughs> and thinking that you know i'll just use this for anything and yeah. uh you know the, that's not what the those films are for you know very specific applications yeah so 500t in a super 8 camera um it's salvageable in the scan, but to pull it down to a decent exposure, it, it really, it, it just doesn't, look, it looks, as I call it, it looks thin. Uh, as in this case, a film that John Fideli shot, uh, 500T on, on the beach. John liked it. He's like, oh, I think it looks really, thin. that's the thing, folks. I mean, I'm here saying, hey, you know, you can get better film, but people that are seeing it are like, oh man, this is great. <laughs> so, I do send film notes to, to our, our, you know, our filmmakers in-house here that are getting their film developed and scanned by the FVP. And I say, hey, please consider 50D, 50 daylight. Or if you really feel you need the speed or you need something that maybe could be used outside and inside, 200T. The next tip is Super 8. And I see, I, I, there was a, I think it was 50D or 200T and it was, I think it was 50D and it was completely overexposed Super 8. Now, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, uh-oh, I know what happened here. Super 8 cameras needed two, two, two sets of batteries. Right. The batteries that run the motor and the, and the little button cell that, that operates the uh, light meter. Right. And, yeah. And it really depends on the age of the camera often yeah. too because some of the newer, though I should say later, Super 8 cameras, everything was powered by your little double A's. But yeah. uh, depending on the age of your camera, you might, have another, you might have another battery that powers your meter. I mean, let's, let's say even the um, you know, Agfa family, which is a very simple point and shoot Super 8 camera, it has two sets of batteries. The, the double A batteries that run the, uh, I'm using a clothespin as a yeah, pointer. Yeah, it's a nice, nice pointer. I'm like, Low budget here at the FPP. <laughs> the double A, the, the, the double A batteries that run the motor and the button cell that runs the light meter. And I think, but I looked at this person's film, I'm like, why is this so overexposed when it's 50 D? And I said, ding, little light bulb went on over my head. I'm like, ah, they, folks are putting the double A's in cameras running. They're like, great, let's shoot a movie without a meter, without, without a, right. a button cell in your meter it's your camera's shooting wide open. So exactly. even, if, so even if, if you're in broad daylight, which this film was with 50D, it's just, you know, open shutter. Once again, it's a negative film. It's a beautiful negative film. It, it, it's salvageable, but it, you know, mm -hmm. 50D should be looking so much. 50D in outdoors properly exposed looks gorgeous. We always encourage people 
at the FPP that if you're going to buy a vintage camera, if you can find one with the manual, even if it costs you an extra five bucks, it's worth it because you really should read that manual before you, before you use the camera. You know, in the case of somebody who forgot their, uh, their second battery, their, their button cell, or in the case of somebody who shot, you know, 500 T in a super eight camera that couldn't, could only handle film up to 160 ASA, which is a lot of older super eight cameras um, that you may not know that just looking at the camera, you really do need the manual. A letter from Germany. Ah, uh, hello. That's uh, from Man Manuel, Manuel, M-A-N-U-E-L. Yeah. Um, says, I'm a great fan of your podcast, listening to the early episodes as well. And I want to thank you for all the inspiration that you give the film community. I was surprised how the whole movie camera thing made an impact on me so that I have purchased two double eight cameras. Whoa. Yeah, that's exciting, right? That's very exciting. It really is, I'm, I'm very happy. A Bell & Howell 1.9 and a Pentaca 8, which I never heard of. I looked it up, I'm like, whoa. He says the Bell, Bell & Howell's working fine, but I have an issue with the Pentaca, which is an East German camera. Well, there you go. <laughs> and this, this ties into a topic that, oh, and you and I discuss often, which is, mm -hmm torque gotta have it the take up yeah you gotta have it <laughs> the take up spool works fine when there is only an empty spool on it and i've experienced this myself mm -hmm. but when i load film into the camera the spool is not moving it can be turned by hand but when the motor runs the film is not moving i've experienced this Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a tough question. And we were talking even this week, Owen and I were about magazine film. And it's kind of the same issue. Well, this gentleman, Manuel, um, he couldn't get his film to run at all. So he at least knows before going out and shooting that, uh oh, it's not working. I've experienced, I load the camera, I test it, it's running, I go out, you know, I'm out, I'm out and about shooting and all of a sudden it just kind of grinds to a halt. And the motor just, just doesn't have enough torque to mm -hmm. pull the film through the gate. And I, I'm not a technician, but these cameras are so old that I just, like, it ran out of steam. Yeah, it could, you know, if it, especially if it's a spring wound, which is most regular eight millimeter cameras, um, especially consumer models were spring wound. You wind them up, there's no battery. Um, you know, those motors can start to wear out the other thing that often happens is that, you know, sometimes the springs, they're like these big cylindrical um, wire, you know, uh, wires that are sp spooled together. Um, usually they have grease or oil in between them and those get hard and, and then the oil doesn't move and the motor won't run. And, you know, a lot of the issues, the great thing about regular cameras is if you're a tinkerer, yeah. and you like that sort of thing, um, regular air cameras can be pretty fun and easy to repair if you're up to it, um, as opposed to like Super 8 cameras, which, you know, came later and they tend to have more electronics and, and whatnot. But some of those things are serviceable if you're yeah. feeling ambitious. Thank, thank you, Emmanuel, by the way, for yeah, your no, kind thank, words. Thank yeah. you. And my suggestion is, my same suggestion, which I, I practice, which is I go on eBay, I find the cheapest same model camera that, that I could find. And I buy it and I, and I, you know, I have one or two or three cameras on my shelf, body only. These are cameras that currently they they have no torque and I'm not going to take them apart, but you know, every now and then I pull them off the shelf. I try again, or some cameras I wind the winding and it just winds and then it doesn't do anything. It's yeah. stuck. So these are issues. There's no known fix. And if you could find a fix, Quite frankly, it wouldn't be worth, it's going to be two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500. And I, I don't know, is that worth it? I don't know. Pro probably not. Yeah. Um, and this is from, I'm going to say George, J-O-E-R-G. And uh, George's email has a dot D-E at the end of it. Yeah, so, the name is, is Jorg. 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 And by the way, thank you so much, folks out there, for sending us emails. It's terrific. A few weeks ago, I bought, and hallelujah, I'll read this letter, because, you know, and I, I know I haven't read the letter yet, 
But, you know, these are things Owen and I talk about, you know, things like, like, oh my God, why, why, why is the only double A film out there a 100 ISO? Why, why, why? We fixed it. We did. Getting, getting ahead of myself. <laughs> a few weeks ago, you see this afternoon, I didn't have the Sanka you sent me. That's right. I was going to say that, that this was sponsored by Sanka. Other instant decaf coffee brands are available. Yeah, I didn't have Sanka. I had regular calf. That's why I'm off the rails right now. That's right. Anyhow, yeah, I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I bought your Cine 8, and I tried it. I tried it first time in my Bolex H8. The ISO 40 produces a higher quality picture than 100 ISO, and the, that. and the camera speed, 1 30th of a second, fits perfect the ISO 40. It's like I wrote this and put someone else's name on it. <laughs> even my chemistry worked well, even if it deviates a little from what you are recommending in your videos. So I guess um, this gentleman has his own, is, is doing his own reversal development. That's awesome. And Going everyone has their own little, you know, formula, right? Yeah, you know, the film, the film community that processes their own, especially in movie film, man, they're like super passionate, super like always trying to find different ways to do stuff. So it makes it so fun. He says, uh, I just ordered more film for my hand cranked Cine Kodak and Bell and Howell cameras. Thank you for this great film. All the best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill his name. Jörg. Jörg Rach, Rach Litzer. Okay. So Sounds pretty close. Yeah. Probably. Awesome. 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 That is great. That's it's awesome. exactly it's what like, we want to hear. It's exactly what we're like, oh man, well, you know what we need? We need, and you know, suffering through months and months of testing. Like it's gotta be like maximum 40. It's gotta be right. maximum 40, you know, right. because all those great eight millimeter uh, uh, automatic cameras, they only go up to 40, Mo you know, most of them. Yep. There, there are exceptions, but you know, you need a 40 for daylight, 25, 40. So great. And this is my last tip. Believe me, I'm seeing a lot of overexposed eight millimeter film here. Mm -hmm. People are using the guides on the side of the camera. Bad idea. Yes, because it said it, the side of these cameras, the Kodak, whatever it might be, Bell and Howell, it said, all it says is black and white or color. So the right. black and white was, 10 ISO. Yeah. And the color was like 25 ISO. Yeah. Max 40 later yeah. on. Yeah. So these directions, which have no other information, are like steering everyone like off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> With their exposures. Yeah. So these little beautiful guides on the front of your camera, on the side of your camera, just ignore them completely and use a handheld light meter or light meter app. Mm -hmm. um, the simple formula of your film ISO, your shutter speed, usually 1 30th of a second at 16 frames per second. And then in your light meter app, you'll see under the shutter speed will be your, your f-stop right. to, you, to use. And, and, and once you start shooting, and if you shoot regularly, you'll, you'll walk outside and you'll be like f-16. Yep, you just or, know. Or you know, you're in the house, grab a light panel or some kind of illumination and like open up all the way. Like you'll, you'll, you know, it'll become second nature to you. Right. Yeah. And the only, the only way around that, if, if you really feel strongly that like, God, I, you know, I really just want to use what the camera tells me. The only way to get around that is to put an ND filter on your lens mm -hmm. um, because that's going to drop your film speed down, uh, you know, to whatever, you know, whether it's 25 or 50 right. or whatever, but that like, that's the only way you can do it. And most people, you know, you can't find any filters for a lot of regular eight cameras, uh, especially like consumer yeah. models. People don't want to do the math. You know, they don't, you know, you don't want to be bothered with that. So just use your meter. Be done yep. with it. Yep. Be done with it. Um, and don't shoot Kodachrome. That should be the last tip on that. Sheet. Oh, yes. That is the last tip. And I think we're, we're getting a lot of Kodachrome in here for develop, scan, and it's about 50-50. Uh, we're always amazed when we're like, oh my God, this reel looks really good. But, the, you know, that's luck. Yeah, it really is. You know, just so, stop. Please, please. I'm telling well, you, Owen can't sleep at night knowing folks, there's so many people out there. 
folks don't know. That's the thing. They don't know that you shouldn't buy that old roll of Kodachrome. And it's not like that old roll of Kodachrome is costing a dollar. Right. These prices for old Kodachrome is, they're crazy. You could buy yeah, a brand new roll. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a roll of uh, Kodachrome regular eight expired 1962 or something like that on eBay for $25 plus shipping. And I, and I, I, I got this close to emailing that um, and saying, look, <laughs> this is, this is worth a dollar. You yeah. know, um, but, and I think part of it is people, you know, sometimes you can get, like you said, Mike, sometimes you can get some really great results. Yep. It rarely happens, but I think what a lot of people do is they go online, they go to the Facebook, they go on YouTube, they see a, a video that somebody posted where they got great results and they're thinking, that's, I'm going to do that too. Um, yep. Well, you know, you're taking a big risk. Exactly. Just buy a new film. Just, just stop. Stop it. That's all I got for today. Uh, as I mentioned earlier about Sanka, Owen sent me some Sanka in the mail. And I'm sorry to report that we don't have any uh, vintage Sanka TV spots scanned yet. Oh, but but for future, future episodes. But I do have, I bought a lot of commercials a few months ago. And in there, I think it was a Nestle brand. It was a, the coffee was, I guess it was so unusual and so new back in the 70s, 1970s that the, 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 the coffee was just called decaf. That's it. It was, it was no brand. It was just decaf. And it's this oddball spot. And I'm going to share it wow. with you folks. Yeah, so, you should. It's like generic beer. Exactly. So you can leave comments below or send us an email. And we'd love to hear from you. And um, hopefully we'll see you sometime soon. And, you know, enjoy shooting. Two with extra cream, no sugar. Three with sugar, no cream. One with cream and just a teeny little bit of sugar. One with All no that cream and sugar hides something in coffee, and it just might be the bitter taste of caffeine. Caffeine tastes bitter. Well, decaf has nothing to hide. It's decaffeinated. Caffeine's bitter taste is gone. Buy a jar of decaf.